Have you ever wanted to stay home and uh, stay in your pajamas, but you have a big meeting at work that day? Well, this fellow standing next to me right here might be your best friend. I'm Mark Sullivan with PC World, and I'm standing here with an AnyBots robot, which acts as your proxy in the office while you're at home controlling it on a web browser. This robotic device will be available this fall, and it will sell directly from AnyBots for $15,000. During our two weeks of entertaining it in our office, we were impressed with the audio quality. The operator of the robot was able to hear us clearly, and the robot also has a high-quality speaker. We also liked the two cameras on the robot. There's one that faces forward to see who you're speaking to and where you're going, but there's also a camera that faces down at the robot's feet, so you can see if you're about to bump into anything. And this made it much easier to drive the robot around the office and not run into anything. We also liked how easy it was to set up the robot. You do need to run it on a Macintosh right now, although that will probably change to other operating systems in the future. But now you need a Mac and Firefox, and you go to the AnyBot site and download a simple plugin, and then you're basically ready to click on a square at the AnyBot's website and you're operating the robot with the up and down and side to side keys on your keyboard. It's similar to a video game. One thing that we thought was cool about the AnyBot was that multiple people can use it and you don't need to have separate robots for separate people. A number of people can simply log into the AnyBot site and they can operate the robot from home. Most of our problems stemmed from the communication system. We found that we were having a lot of trouble with the Wi-Fi connection. The robot requires a connection speed of 600 kilobits per second upstream and 200 kilobits per second downstream. And the more bandwidth you have, the better the video quality. One problem we had over and over was the robot would simply stop operating when the Wi-Fi signal became too weak or if the robot moved to the edge of the zone. Right now there is a video screen at the front of the head of the robot in which you're supposed to be able to see the person that's operating the robot. That screen was not operable when we hosted the robot at our offices, and we think that once it is operational, and it will be by this fall, that it will really help communication. If you actually know the person that is operating the robot from the web browser, it makes it a lot easier to get used to the experience. The robot turned out to be a close talker. When it was talking to someone in the hallway, it had a strange habit of sort of rolling on its wheels slowly toward the person that it was talking to. The other oddity we noticed from the robot is that it, sometimes it began spinning around quickly on one of its wheels after having received no such command from the operator. Finally, the robot does need some human assistance to be truly useful in the office. If you are working on the sixth floor and you have a meeting that you need to attend on the fifth floor, somebody's going to have to carry your robot down to the fifth floor. We also found that it needed help backing up to get it into its charger. People's reactions were varied. Some people were at first a bit uncomfortable with uh, having a robot listen to what they say and talk back to them. Uh, others, like myself, found, it, uh, found that it was easy to get used to, and after a while communicating with the robot um, during a meeting, you began to feel more like you were talking to the person that was operating uh, the robot, and you began to forget about the, the actual physical robot that was in the room. Either way, to everybody, it was a real novelty, and it was something that attracted a lot of interest in the office. So if you happen to have $15,000 laying around, one of these robots might be a very good idea for your company. Actually, the pitch is uh, that this price point, although it sounds high, is actually comparable to a high-end video conferencing system from somebody like Cisco. So if you have that kind of budget, it might be for you. I'm Mark Sullivan with PC World. Thank you for watching.